Here's the other idea. Because we do it all, we figure out what we need to do all live in a room, and we just get some killer performances because we know we can. And then we have those. Hey, uh, Buckley, are we using this SM5? Like just some sort of like an intro mm -hmm. hook ripped to that. I might forget the songs they sing that night on the stage. Do you hear this laugh? Yeah. Is it too fast? I mean, as long as you're singing like that, Drew. It's great. Public grief, right here. Go for it, man. My last few records have been a very a similar approach where we kind of track everything live. That was really, I'm really proud of those records, but I wanted to do something new uh, on this album and I wanted to sort of expand the sort of sonic space that we, we would kind of create in. And, but we still wanted to stay with that, that core idea of recording live and so we went to the studio and kind of got the majority of the record done in this really intimate way where Will's playing drums over here and Nathan and Rich are in the same room and, and there's just this very personal, intimate feel while also trying to get to sort of a bigger modern sonic landscape. And Echo Mountain felt like the right place for that. North Carolina at Echo Mountain Recording Studios, which is a studio that me and the band have wanted to record in a long time. It's this uh, big, beautiful old church. A lot of great records have been made here. And, uh, these are a special group of songs. We kind of felt like this big live room would really add a lot of kind of magic to the to the album. You know, we go to studios a lot in Nashville and record, and it's like you kind of got to go home in the evening and turn it off. And it's nice to get away and kind of camp out at a studio out of town and, and kind of work late. We've been putting in long, long days, long nights kind of finding all that special magic that happens when you're in the studio. And this is a, just a great room. You know, Nathan's kind of set up over here. I'm in Rich's spot, sort of, and we've got drums over there, and then I'm in the different rooms. Grand piano over there, and uh, we've been having a lot of fun. It's that little part where I was like, bam, 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 The, the team we had in the studio was Kaysen producing. Buckley Miller came with us as our engineer, and he's incredible, did a great job. Uh, Will Sales behind the drum kit. Will's an old friend of ours who's played on tons and tons and tons of local records. He also happens to be one of Kaysen's best friends, and Kaysen really felt like he was the right guy for the job. And uh, Will loved the experience so much that he's going on the tour with us this fall, so he's our, he's our new road drummer as well. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Rich Brinsfield on the bass, been playing with me for I think 12 years. Just an incredible guy, incredible singer, great songwriter as well, and uh, just an all around kind of creative tour de force. And then Nate Duggar, who has been playing with me since he was 17, and I think he's 32 now, so 15 years we've been making music together. He's sort of, you know, known as a guitar player, but as you can kind of see on the record, he plays everything. He plays piano, he plays organ, he plays mandolin, he plays pedal steel. Uh, he's on like six instruments on every song basically and so uh, we obviously had a great a great team of people uh, there in the studio to make this record happen. You know so Kaysen's really uh, like got, he's a big visionary type producer he he and I got together for many many days before we went to Asheville to kind of map out which songs we wanted to do uh, how we wanted them to sort of how we wanted to approach them, the, the different tones on the instruments that we wanted to have. It was important for him to think through sort of the the way that songs work together as well. You know, so you know you've got a song like Dragons, which is a very you know very simple approach, and then you've got a song like End of the World, which has like tons and tons of tracks and big sonic you know architecture. And how do you put those two songs together on the same record? And that's sort of one of the things that Kaysen was really good at in these conversations, both before and in the studio, we're having these conversations about, um, you know, like on, instead of just having some kick drum that we filter through, you know, different plugins, let's all go out there on the floor and let's kick the floor together over and over and over again. And then he can take that sound and then sort of mold it in the after process. Uh, 
to sort of fit with the bigger tones on something like End of the World, but it was important that it was still a performance. make sure that we kept the human element as the, as the sort of driving force and Kaysen was really good at sort of captaining that ship, challenging us to think things through in a different way and especially challenging me as, I, as a singer uh, to kind of explore new places in my voice. Um, you know, songs like Into the World are way outside of my, my historical box and there's, there's notes that I've had to get to on songs like You Never Leave My Heart that I've never been able to get to before, and he ch sort of challenged me to take those chances. My heart was pounding, I pushed fast forward. You're my husband. <laughs> You're my husband. <laughs> I'm your husband. We, we're husbands. Nate and Rich and I have been making records together for over a decade, and there is uh, a lot of, we just love each other a lot. Like, you know, when I sing these songs that are about my life, you know, uh, like see the world and singing about my kids. Like they, they know where I'm coming from, and they want the music to match the emotion. So there's never once have I ever seen either one of those guys like mail it in. They always are giving their full creative selves over to the process, and that's a that's a gift. I think the most important thing for an artist as it relates to music is, is to feel trust and to feel known. And the history that I have with those two guys is, I mean, we were making records together before any of us knew anything about life, knew anything about music, but we had this trust. And so now when we go in the studio, I, I know that they have my best interest at heart and they know I have their best interest at heart. And so. You know, when Nathan says, hey, I want to try this in a different key, or maybe, maybe you should try this in a different key, instead of digging my heels in, I'll say, yeah, let's try it. I always want to try anything they suggest. A lot of artists use session players. What's cool about Nathan and Rich is they started out as band guys, and they're so good at music that they've become session players in Nashville, and they play on tons of other records. But even in the midst of that, they've stayed sort of loyal to me and to our music. So one of the most fun things about the c collaborating with people over the course of a lifetime is, is that you kind of you learn each other's you know steps, you learn each other's processes, and so like I know that Nathan uh, wants to try you know sort of ev to attack every angle of a song. So like, should this song start with piano or should it start with guitar? Should it, which key should it be in? Like he's gonna analyze all those parts and try and we're going to work through those steps but he's going to do it in a pretty efficient way you know i know that rich is like loves sort of to be in the moment i love to be in the moment uh both of them tend to have the capacity to do something in like one or two takes and be done with it then they still like to keep going and well, yeah that was a great take and it's good but let's try it a few more times and see what the if the magic happens and that's cool too because then Kaysen can kind of speak in and say yeah give it a few more tries and then as we try it sometimes it gets it kind of is a declining rate of you know goodness and you kind of go hey we got it we're good let's move on producer's role is to do a couple different things at once and that's to get out of the way and let the music happen but also to continue to steer it towards you know towards a, a conclusion and I think Kaysen did that really really well and i um, forever grateful to him for it. The studio there, you know, there's the big studio and then you go downstairs and there's like a hangout room that has an arcade and there's this, you know, old piano down there that's sort of, you know, it's in tune, but it's, it's kind of got a quirky sound. And there were certain songs where you kind of go, man, this, instead of this beautiful grand piano that has this very pristine sound, this song needs like, you know, something a little more lighthearted, like uh, uh, you want what you can't have, you know, it needed like a, a bar room piano feel. And so we ran a bunch of mics down the stairs and mic'd up the sort of fun piano in the arcade room. And on Dragons, we, you know, we tracked some of the stuff right out there all together on the floor around one mic and, you know, put that into the, into the recording. And,
So we had, we had finished recording what we thought we were done with the record, but we still had two or three hours left in, the, in our last day. And there's a song, You Want What You Can't Have, that I had, I had written with Lori McKenna, my friend Lori, and um, it was sort of a real ballad, like, some people want a house on the top of the hill. And it was like, just couldn't quite, musically, I couldn't find the right frame for it, you know? And so Kaysen was like, hey, we got three hours. Let's just like go back in there and re record this one. And, you know, Will and Rich and Nathan start playing along. And Nathan's playing acoustic. And I'm just singing because Nathan kind of had this, uh, this acoustic idea that I was kind of letting him run with. And they started playing it and I started singing it and I was like, oh, this is what this musical frame needs to sound like. And we, I think we only tr tracked it like two or three times and it was like, okay, that's it, that's the song. And I sang the vocal a couple times and then that was pretty much the song. You know, we went back home later and added some of the, like the, the lead electric part and the piano stuff. But it was like, you know, a song that wasn't even going to make the record honestly has become one of my three or four favorite songs on the record. And that's one of the magic things about being in the studio is, is something that may not have been working, you know, before you go in there, you give it a try when you get there, and all of a sudden all the lights come on and the magic happens. And the same thing can happen with a song. There's a song uh, on the that we thought was gonna make the record, and we went in there and just couldn't quite ever get to where we wanted with it, and it didn't make the cut, and maybe it'll see the light of day some other time, but it didn't make the record. And that's, that's why it's important to go in the studio to have that human-on-human -human interaction. I'm always excited to tour a new record, but the way I feel right now about this particular album and taking it on the road is a feeling unlike any I've ever experienced. These songs and the way they challenged me as a singer and as a songwriter, the anticipation that I have of going on the road and singing these songs to our fans makes me unable to sleep and not in a nervous way, but in an excited way. beginning of this record like I'm still jealous for a big song like I'm ambitious for a big song I want a song that connects with people on a universal level and whether that's into the world which does that in sort of a bigger sonic space or even dragons which is not a sonically big song but it's a big universal theme song uh, and I hope that these songs find uh, you know a big audience in if they don't, it's fine because we've got a great career, we've got great fans, but I want that, I'm ambitious for that. Uh, because I love so much music in my own life and history that it has that sort of universal appeal. And into the world, I think, is, is something that we all feel like at times. Like, man, the world is crashing in around us. Life is unbearable. Death is inevitable. The dead gentleman, I'm not giving up, and I'm putting my boots on today, and I'm going after life. You know, I, well, that's what I can do, you know. I'm not dead yet. This is the most honest I know how to be. And I'm at a point in my life where I'm not afraid of that anymore as an artist and as a, as a person. And so if I can share that and it means something to people, then that is my offering. <laughs>